think when you're done. Okay. Tell me when you've got it. So the recording should be rolling. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining uh, our, yes. our every Tuesday ser uh, series, 20 minutes that can change your life. It's a, it's a big, big goal, but it's true. Uh, today, we're going to be covering Office 365, managed Office 365, um, and um, maybe more importantly than just better understanding um, managed Office 365 is understanding what questions to ask your, your customers to tee up conversation on Office 365. Can't tell you how many, how many lunch and learns I had with TPX when I was running top speed data and they would cover, you know, Craig did a great job covering, you know, the details of, of the services and like all our guys are like, okay, well, how do I engage? How do I, how do I bring this stuff up? So we've got that covered uh, in, the, in the session today. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to the wise man, the one and only David Klein. Thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate that introduction. Uh, a lot of people beg to differ with the wise man comment, though, for sure. <laughs> so um, thanks, everybody, for, for being here. Uh, again, we're going to try and keep it to, down to 20 minutes. Um, want it to be pretty interactive today. So uh, feel free to you know throw in those questions as we go along. So as always, do pay attention because there will be a quiz at the end. But it will be interesting to see if the magnificent and clairvoyant Mr. Peretti is able to answer the questions before they're even asked this, because I'm trying to throw him a little curveball this week, so. Oh, okay, trying to twist me up, okay. Yeah, we're trying, it's not easy, so. <laughs> and just, you know, a reminder guys, part of what the idea here is just to kind of reinforce this concept of you know, the transformation that's been made by the artists formerly known as Telepacific to the company we know as TPX today, where, you know, we're doing a lot more than voice and internet circuits, and, and we're managing a lot of really kind of business critical services these days. Uh, this is uh, kind of just, you know, the same photo we, we do every couple weeks on these calls and these presentations is that's the network, which is you know, part of where it all begins, not so much with the Microsoft 365 offering, but with a lot of the other stuff that we've been talking about. And again, we, you know, this is that slide that, that looks at all those different services that TPX is offering these days from the security, which is, you know, so mission critical these days. But again, as you can tell by the highlighted in blue, today's all about managed Microsoft 365, which uh, I think is the new name. So we always like to start with why TPX, you know, because I know that you guys as, um, as partners in the community have a lot of different providers to choose from for these types of services. But, um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about Teams. There's, there's a little sneak peek we want to give on, on Teams here in, in a couple of slides. But and we brought one of the, one of the true... TPX smart guys on this call today, a solutions architect extraordinaire known, Joseph, known as Joseph Aloisi. And so he's gonna help a little bit and we'll talk about teams. Um, but, you know, and, and this is not necessarily why TPX, but if you can get a customer that has bought licenses from Microsoft, and then you can get that customer to change their digital part of record to one of your suppliers like TPX, you can pick up a ton of cash and it's and it's super easy money. And so along with the licenses that TPX can provide to your customer and we, and we can bill for those, we've got two flavors of managed service that go along with the license itself. Mm -hmm. And this is a recurring theme you'll hear over and over from us. We've got a core level, which is our basic level of service. And it really includes billing from TPX as opposed to Microsoft billing the customer direct. And then we provide tier one support. And that's the big thing that people, um, you know, are not required to your customer would not be required to uh, reach out to Microsoft for support. They can get that tier one support from TPX. Mm -hmm. And then if we have additional challenges, we can escalate the, the issue to Microsoft on your customer's behalf. So that's big. And that core level of services runs, it's $2 per license 
and that's above and on top of the cost of the license itself. So let me stop there. Is there any questions? And you can just blurt them out or, or uh, type them in the chat. Any questions on that? DK, can I add one thing to that? And that is, is on the licenses when they move the license to TPX or we fire up a new customer on Microsoft 365, we do a price match for all those licenses that are sold by Microsoft. So we're not, uh, we're not really, you know, increasing the, the cost of those licenses. We do a, a price match online. Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. Good ad. Thank you, Joe. And then the, the upper level of, of service that we offer in conjunction with the Microsoft 365 offering is our optimum. So it includes everything that's included in the core, but then we also add on an unlimited exchange and OneDrive cloud backup. And Joe, can you explain that one a little bit for us? Sure. Yeah. So um, there's a company that was started up called Skykick and First, they started out with producing software that allowed uh, customers to move their email, contacts, calendars, tasks from where they are into Microsoft 365. So it's a it's a it's a software that helps you uh, copy and move that data when you are migrating all of that to the uh, cloud. And then they came out with what's called Skykick Backup which is basically a, uh, a backup, as it says here, uh, unlimited email, yeah. OneDrive, and files on SharePoint uh, are backed up in the Skykick cloud for unlimited okay. storage and unlimited time. So you, uh, you can call TPX at any time Let's say one of your users deleted a, an Excel yeah. file for for you know by accident. A couple of days went by, and all of a sudden they can't What's get it, they thing? can't find it. We can restore that file yeah, right back to where it was deleted from. So uh, just another added value with the optimum service. Wow! Wow! Awesome. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you so much. Let me hey, and um, on and I'll get back with you. Is that Farmalo? Yeah, Steve, you want to mute? There I we go. To, he just muted. Mute. Mute. Oh, you okay. did. You never, oh, nice. I never trust the boss on these. There you go. <laughs> so, so, in, so with the Optimum, you get that uh, backup that Joseph so eloquently um, talked about there. And then TPX will also administer the customer's tenant portal for them. So any changes need to be made. Um, employees leave, new employees come on. We take care of all that for the customer. And then that retails for $7 per user. Um, I think some discounting might be possible there if needed, especially in, you know, if it's a larger kind of count type of opportunity, but those are the retail prices. It's two for the core, seven for optimum. And then TPX can also assist with um, your customers who are migrating off of maybe a legacy exchange server and they wanna go to Microsoft 365 in the cloud, we can help with that. And then the big one that we, we always talk about is that, you know, it's, this is, this Microsoft 365 is just a small piece of what we do these days. And so it could be a land and expand situation where we start with that. And then all of a sudden we start talking about security and we ask a couple of security questions and, you know, that blows into a whole, maybe managed firewall or managed endpoint or something like that. So you can really increase your revenue exponentially by partnering with TPX because of all those different uh, additional services that we offer. Any questions with that? Okay, so um, so this is there. There's a there's a rule, a PowerPoint rule. It's called the five by five rule. And just for extra points, does anybody know what the five by five rule is as it relates to PowerPoint? Must be that it can't be more than five columns and five rows for people to actually see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's on, on any given slide in a PowerPoint presentation, you should never have more than five bullets, and each bullet should not contain more than five words. And so this obviously is an epic fail when it comes to PowerPoint. But I wanted to show you this because this is 
the new uh, marketing slick that, that we've produced. And although it's super busy and should not be part of a PowerPoint, when you have the slick in front of you, it actually um, reads well. And it just shows all the changes that Microsoft has made recently with regards to their 365 op offerings. So what I'm gonna try and do here, is zoom in a little bit on the ones that are probably gonna be the ones you know, that we deal with most often, often. And it's these Microsoft 365 small business plans here. And they've got three of them. They've got the business basic. And the thing to keep in mind about the business basic is you don't get any of the office apps, the PowerPoint, Word, Excel, that stuff. You don't get those to, to be run locally on your computer. Those with the basic, those are done via browser through the web only. And then the other two that we're likely to see are the business standard and the business premium. And you can see the pricing for those there. And again, as Joe mentioned, it's the same price as if your customer went to Microsoft Direct. There's also a nonprofit SKU here, which is kind of interesting. Not one I've had, had the pleasure of dealing with yet, but man, <laughs> some nice discounts if you've got the you know customers in that nonprofit sec um, area. But but again, to note here, the maximum number of users that qualify for the small biz plans is 300. So you keep that in mind. If 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 you go beyond that. We go over here to the enterprise plans, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, all this because you can get a copy of this from your channel manager. Um, have them email it over to you, and you guys can go over it and study it. But I just kind of wanted to highlight. So the difference here is web only versus desktop version of the apps. And then the thing you get with the premium that you don't get with the standard is this blank here, which is this in place. Is, should say place, in place hold and litigation hold, which is ideal, you know, for your, um, for your like uh, legal type customers, those types of people. And there was one other one down here, um, uh, the Microsoft Intune app. So the Intune would be an add-on to the standard, but it's included with the premium. So, um, Intune, Joe, is that the Intune? That's the one that helps them manage mobile devices, correct? That is correct. Okay, yeah. So if you've got a customer who's talking about mobile device management, uh, you definitely want to put them on the, the premium plan so that they can get access to that Intune application that'll help with managing the mobile devices that they've got out there, the, the iPads and the iPhones and smartphones, that type of thing. So any questions with that? That was really kind of all I wanted to go over on this particular slide. Hey DK, is there a difference in other than the branding between Microsoft 365 and Office 365 under the enterprise? Yeah, no, um, it, you know, it's all kind of one and the same. Yeah. And it, yeah. And, you know, and it's kind of the same thing here too on the enterprise plans, oops, sorry. Um, you know, where they've got the different flavors and, and the F3, for example, is web only, the E1's web only. And, you know, it's really kind of a dizzying array, but, um, but we can help you guys with the customers that are migrating to Microsoft or Office 365 understand what would be the appropriate licenses for them. Um, but the other thing is if you've got an existing customer that's already on Microsoft 365 and they've got, you know, and you'll, what you'll find is they've got maybe some plan ones for just people that just have email only. And then they've got some maybe E1s, E3s, or maybe the basics. Um, they can take and they can go into their portal and they could print a listing of all their existing <laughs> Uh, licenses, and then we can generate a quote for them based on those existing licenses, and then we can layer on the appropriate uh, level of managed service, whether that be core or optimum. Does that did that help at all? Or yeah, I mean and that would be a question. It's pretty um, self-explanatory if they're moving from their own Exchange server, but if they 
currently have an Office 365 product and you know maybe they're looking for somebody to manage it. If, the question would always be why TPX, right? I mean, what what would what would move in, incite them to move? It, not necessarily pricing, but I think it's the overlay of the actual management of it, right? Yeah, so the, the two biggest ones, in my opinion, as to why TPX, and thanks for asking that question, Andrew, are number one, that we'll do monthly billing for them. And if they have any other TPX services, it's all on a combined invoice versus typically with, with Microsoft, they'll ask the, your customer to pay for a year in advance, typically. Um, so, you know, instead of having to do that year in advance, they can do a monthly payment plan with TPX, number one. And then number two is the tier one level of support. You know, nobody wants to try and get, get you know, voice support, even much less like email support from Microsoft, right? I mean, it's, it's almost like trying to get support from, you know, AT&T or, or the federal government. And so with TPX managing those licenses for your customer, they get to call, they get to leverage us and you know our world class support you know where we still are answering our calls with live human beings which is becoming more and more rare these days, so it's the billing and then the technical support I think is the biggest reason as to why TPX. Great. Yeah. Add to that, Thank Joe? You. Yeah. Yeah, I think one thing that I would add to that is our project management. So we've been moving mail now for close to six years. Uh, we have a group of Microsoft certified engineers. Uh, there's about 35 of them that uh, do an array of support, whether it's endpoint with, uh, with Windows, or we have a dedicated group just working on Microsoft 365 and doing these projects. Uh, we've become very, very good at, at working with customers they get a dedicated project manager that works through the process, uh, single point of contact and moving this mail. And they're, uh, they've done, they've, they're really knowledgeable about where a customer's mail is coming from. Like, uh, you know, when you're moving files from Google uh, over to Microsoft, you know, some of those files do not replicate well. And they're very good at working with customers to let them know what's going to be successful and what's not going to be successful when you're going through and getting into the, to the, the details of a migration. So I feel we bring a lot of added value in that area. Yeah, and I see that some of the, um, like Brian Roach, I see, hey, Brian, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, for some reason I can't unmute him. Maybe he has to unmute himself. But if, if you wanna, um, you know, if you want to ask a question, guys, go ahead and unmute yourself, or you can do the group chat. I got that open now, and I can keep an eye on that as well. But yeah, so um, thanks for that, Joe. Appreciate that add on there. So next slide. You know, so so okay. What questions do I ask? And we've put together a nice little, very concise um, discovery questionnaire that includes all the TPX managed services that that we're offering to the these days and, and the Microsoft 365 is one of them. And again, you know, this is, this is a, you know, a PowerPoint no-no with all these bullets and words and stuff, but this is kind of like what it looks like in that, um, in that, in that document that we've created, that's got all these discovery questions. So if you don't have a copy of this, feel free to reach out to me. I can get you a copy or um, your channel manager because everybody on, a, on the Farmerlo team has a copy of this document as well. And then I wanted to bring up the new October SPIFs because as you'll see, there's some new stuff here. And for those of you that were able to catch the, the webinar that was hosted by our CEO, our new CEO, Don Juice, um, a little while, uh, a couple, maybe a week or two ago, um, you know, we spoke a little bit there about this new MDR, which is managed detection and response, which is really taking security to the next level. And so um, we're doing that with our managed firewall service, our managed endpoints. And 
you know, as an additional incentive for you guys to, to start talking about this level of security with your, with your customers, we're doing an extra 2% on the residual and we're doing a, a seven times the monthly recurring charge on the SPIF. So, um, so there's good, good money to be had there. And then currently we're doing five times uh, the monthly recurring revenue for the firewall and endpoint service. And then um, four times the monthly recurring cost for MSX networks. And again, that's our Meraki kind of based offering the managed WAN, which includes the different flavors of SD-WAN we're doing these days. And then um, I highlighted the Office 365, the optimum level of service that we saw down there that was the $7 per user level of service. We're doing a four time spiff on that one, but then we're doing a one time spiff on the core level of service, which includes again, just the, the billing and the tech support. So I wanted to point those out and then but in addition, we're doing five times uh, the monthly recurring or the MRC on UCX. And we're doing two times SPIF on UCX Smart Voice, which is that hybrid where you can still deliver like a SIP trunk type service. We can deliver native ethernet. We could convert it to a PRI or even like a super trunk if, if needed, even business lines actually we could still do that if needed, which is kind of crazy. But then at the same time, we can layer on the UCX uh, client, which is kind of the mobility client that turns your computer into a soft phone. You can download the app onto your smartphone and you can answer your DID calls that would be coming in on SIP trunk. And you'd normally answer maybe with your Avaya phone or whatever. You can answer that on this soft phone app. We call it the UCX client. Um, no matter where you are. So um, really kind of a, a cool, very unique um, service that TPX is offering these days. And then we're also doing a two times fifth on call center. Hey DK, on that last point, if their SIP trunk or uh, PRI goes down, the client would still work and able them to still receive calls and make calls and communicate internally. And it also gives them the presence, right, to see other people that are in their enterprise and their business that, you know, whether they're available and they can message them. So even though the circuit may be down, you know, and their phone service may be down, it's a great backup as like an insurance on, on what they have. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Andrew. Great point. Thanks so much. Definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Super uh, kind of disaster recovery, business continuity kind of um, uh, plan that can be enabled with that UCX smart voice service. Yep. Absolutely. Any, hey, D else? Mm -hmm. DK, this is Afnan. How you doing? I have a question. Hey, yeah. How are you? Wonderful. Um, uh, good, good. UCX client, my understanding, only works on SIP handoff. On the PRI handoff, is it still the same? Because it has to be IP enabled. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so what we can do is if the phone system is set up for um, a PRI and it's not necessarily set up for a native ethernet connection, you know, via SIP trunk, if I could use that term, I'm not a fan, but um, what we would do with this UCX smart voice here is we would deliver the, the voice service to the customer prem as voice over IP or as, as, as like a SIP trunk. And then we would just, we would plug it into an AdTran device that would, that would do a protocol conversion from voice over IP or SIP, whatever you want to call it to the ISDN PRI. And so for, for connectivity into the phone system or you know, compatibility with the phone system, I guess you could say. So it's just you know, a box that we put on prem to take care of that conversion for us. Does, does that answer that question? Yes, thank you. Now it's clear. So it's, it's SIP all the way and then you convert it on premises just for the handoff to the PBX. But exactly. it's in reality, it is SIP whether it's yep. over the top or it's a physical circuit. Exactly. Yeah, got it. Thank you. No, thank, great question. Thanks for asking him for the clarification. So that brings us to our quiz. And um, wow, so I'm very happy for once, Andrew hasn't already answered one of these questions. <laughs> and it's, uh, 
a, a little bit different today. And this came as a result of um, some banter we were having with some of our Northern California friends earlier um, yesterday and, and last week. So question number one is which LA sports franchise recently won a national championship? And for those already you know, answered it. Andrew already answered, answered it in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So uh, definitely been a while. Um, those of us here in SoCal, obviously I'm um, kind of still basking in the glory of that Lakers championship. So fun times. Been a lifetime Laker fan. That was a great, that was a great. Sorry, Brian. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> so question number two. Which LA sports franchise is four games away from winning their own national championship? Dodgers, Dodgers. Yeah, yeah very good. So, wow, what a crazy comeback, huh? Down 3-1 and then um, to pull off three in a row. Uh, pretty exciting times for us down here. And I know there's a lot of Giants fans up there. And, and um, you guys have, uh, for the most part, had your way with us. But uh, nice to see our team get back in there this year. Yeah. And then, uh, so third and final question, which college will win the Pac-12 football championship uh, this year, assuming we end up getting to play a whole, you know, some sort of a whole season? I, I'm not sure if it'll happen or not, but I think Joe knows the answer to this one, but I don't think anybody else will. I, I know the answer, but I wouldn't have picked it. <laughs> no, well, no. <laughs> I can only talk smack now because once the season starts, I'm going to be getting smacked <laughs> because I happen to be a UCLA Bruins fan. So um, there you yeah. go. Yeah, not much luck of that, or not much chance of that happening. But um, I got to get a little plug in there now while I can. So, so that's it. Um, we're not going to be uh, doing a, a demo of the portals, but you know, guys, if you haven't seen the Dash Portal yet. Yeah, get with your channel manager and have them show you around there. It really is quite phenomenal post sales. Pre sales, it's got its challenges, but post sales, there, there's just so much information to be had in there. Joe and I put together an entire network diagram for this multi site customer, including all the IPs of the internet circuits, all the IPs on the local area network. I mean, and all that information we were able to pull out of Dash which we never had visibility to in the past. So it's, it's something else. And then of course, a, a Velo Cloud orchestrator portal demo. Um, man, if you're not doing those for your, for your prospects yet, make sure you're doing them or having you know, somebody do those for you, whether it's TPX or another supplier. I mean, it just sells itself. And then um, thank you so much. Now, wait a minute, where's my WhatsApp? So I missed my slide. Well, what's up next? Um, Craig or Joe, do you guys happen to know? I think I might pull that up because I wanted to give you the, the quick uh, what's next. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't see that. I've got that here. So next. Firewall. Yeah, so we, we, we actually switched firewall and office. Oh, I see. So the next one. Looks like it's going to be November 3rd, and that's going to be endpoints. And again, this, this part's inaccurate. Don't pay attention there. Um, but yeah, so um, so be on the lookout for um, you know the endpoint presentation on November 3rd, which should be two weeks from today. And that's it. Thanks for the time, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. it. Thank you, DK. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. You too. All right. You too. Bye. Thank you, DK. Yep. Is that you, Brian? Yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for joining. It's been a little bit. Yeah, for sure, man. I, 